Hi guys, this is Mrs. Rooker. I am going to be recording the video for day six today, which is completing the square. Um, I'm going to try to make this video short. So, so um, sorry, I was having issues zooming in. Um, so to save time, I'm going to skip the review question and go straight to the vocabulary box. And I'm just going to do a quick example of um what completing the square is going to look like and then we'll kind of go through uh together step by step and really break this down uh so if we're trying to complete the square the first thing we want to do is always move this c value remember this um the number in front of the x squared is your a the number in front of your x is uh, b and then this is the c value you want to move the c to the other side so x squared minus 20x equals negative 24. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave a blank here on this side and a blank here on this side. And what we need to do is find a number that's going to complete the square. It's the special number that will turn this thing over here into a perfect square trinomial. Remember, perfect square trinomials are a x squared plus 2 a b x plus b x squared and that should be in parentheses um, so what we need to have on here is we need to find a special number that co will complete the square. To do that, we take our b value, so in this case b is negative 20. We divide it by 2, and then we square it. So negative 10 divided by, or sorry, negative 20 divided by 2 is negative 10. Square that, and we get 100. We should always get a positive number there. Whatever we add on one side of the equation, we always have to add on the other. All right, and then what we just created was a perfect square trinomial that will factor to x minus 10 times x minus 10, or we could rewrite that as x minus 10 squared. Um, this was from our perfect square trinomial day. If you don't have that memorized, that's okay. You could do the big X. What multiplies to 100 but adds to negative 20? And that would be negative 10 and negative 10. But the condensed way to write it is X minus 10 squared. Equals, and then we just combine the uh, 100 and the negative 24. And we should get, let's see, 76. And then once we've completed the square, we can solve this by square rooting. I'm not going to take the time to do that on this problem, but I will do it on, on the, the next problems. All right, so now we're going to move on to number one. The really nice thing about number one, this part here is already a perfect square trinomial. Because um, if you look at the B, 16 divided by 2 would be 8, squared would give you 64. So that's a perfect square trinomial. This will factor to what multiplies to 64 but adds to 16 is 8 and 8. So this will factor to x plus 8 squared equals 36. So now that we've completed the square, we can solve this, because the whole point of this was to solve by square rooting. So we can square root both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. x plus 8 equals plus or minus, square root of 36 is 6. Then add eight, or subtract 8 to the other side. So x equals negative 8 plus or minus 6. That you can combine. You can do negative 8 plus 6. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. And then you can also do negative 8 minus 6, and that would be negative 14. So our two answers are negative 2 and negative 14. All right. Next one, same process. This is already a perfect square trinomial. If you divide negative 22 by 2, you get negative 11. 
squared, you get 121. So this will factor what multiplies to 121, but adds to negative 22. That's going to be negative 11 and negative 11, which means this factors to x minus 11 squared. And then to solve this, we just solve by square rooting. Square root both sides. You get x minus 11 equals plus or minus root 13. I would try to simplify root 13, but it doesn't simplify. Last step to get x by itself is just add 11. And the proper place to put that is in the front. I can't combine an 11 with a root 13, so this is my final answer. All right, so the next little section, we're finding the C value that would make this into a perfect square trinomial. To do that, we divide the B by two, and then we square it. That's supposed to say 10 divided by two squared. 10 divided by two is five, five squared is 25. So my C value would need to be 25, and then that would be a perfect square trinomial. The next one, 8 divided by 2, or negative 8 divided by 2 squared is going to be negative 4 squared, which is going to be 16. All right, this one's going to be a little uglier. It's going to be 13 divided by 2 squared. I would just leave that as a fraction. 13 squared is 169, and then 2 squared is 4. So that would be our C value. Just leave it as a fraction, usually easier to deal with than um, decimals when we're dealing with square roots and perfect squares. All right, sorry, my thing froze up on me a little bit. There we go. All right, so now we're going to solve completely by uh, completing the square. Now, these ones are not perfect square trinomials already. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the 18 to the other side to kind of get it away, get it out of the way. So I'm subtracting the 18 to the other side. And then I'm always going to have two blanks. What I put in the blanks is the special number that's going to complete the square. So to find the special number that's going to complete the square, I divide by 2, and then I square it. So I get 6 squared, which is 36. But in order to not change the value of the equation, whatever I do on one side, I must do to the other. Then this part should always factor what multiplies to 36 but adds to 12 is going to be 6. And then just combine what's on the other side. Let's see, 36 minus 8. 18 is 18. And then, then we solve by square rooting. So we square root both sides. We get x plus 6 equals plus or minus. Reduce the 18. This breaks into 9 and 2. 3 and 3, so 3 root 2. And then the last step, subtract the 6. Proper form is to put it in front of the plus or minus. All right, next one. Again, this isn't a perfect square trinomial yet, so I'm just going to get rid of the C value, move it to the other side, and have a blank in its place. So when we move it to the other side, remember we have to do opposite of what it was. I subtracted it to the other side. All right, to find the number that completes the square, I take the B value, I divide by 2, and then I square it. Um, I get negative 5 squared, which is 25. Whatever I do on one side, I do to the other. This part here is going to factor. What multiplies to 25, but adds to negative 10. It's going to be negative 5 and negative 5. This will factor x minus 5 squared equals, combine like terms on the other side, negative 21 plus 25 is 4. And now we finish this by solve by square rooting. We get x minus 5 equals plus or minus 2. 
and then and then we add five to both sides, so we get five plus or minus two. But remember, this is two separate answers. This is going to be five plus two, which is seven, and five minus two, which is three. And you can always plug in to check your work. Um, like I'll plug in three really quick. Three squared is nine minus 10 times 3 is 30, plus 21. 9 minus 30 is negative 21, plus 21 does give us 0. So it worked. So I'm assuming 7 will probably work as well. All right, just a couple more. Um, we're not going to do all of them for this video, um, just because I'm going to run out of time. Uh, this one, the C value is already out of the way, which is nice. x squared plus 8x plus blank equals negative 1 plus blank. To find the special number, divide 8 in half, we get 4. Square that, we get 16. This should factor to what multiplies to 16 but adds to 8. That's going to be 4 and 4. So x plus 4 squared equals combine like terms on the other side we get 15. Now we solve by square rooting x plus 4 equals plus or minus root 15. Root 15 doesn't break down at all because it just breaks into 5 and 3. No pairs. Subtract 4 to the other side. Proper form is to put it in the front of the plus or minus. And that's our final answer. All right, if we have um, something in front of our leading coefficient, we need to factor it out of everything, divide everything by it. So we're gonna divide everything by three first. That's a priority. So we've got x squared plus, um, I believe this is 14x equals um, negative eight, I should have left some room and I forgot to. This would be plus blank equals eight plus blank. Um, divide 14 and a half, we get seven. Squared is 49. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. What multiplies to 49 but adds to 14, that's gonna be x plus seven equals uh, 41 root both sides. x plus 7 equals plus or minus root 41, which I don't think breaks down at all. Subtract 7 from both sides, we get negative 7 plus or minus root 41. All right. One more. It's going to be a little bit ugly because um, of our b value. So we want to get rid of the 12. We have x squared plus 5x plus blank equals negative 12. I subtracted it to the other side, plus blank. To find the special number, I need to divide 5 in half and square it. With fractions like this, just leave them as fractions, don't make them decimals. When we square that, we get 25 over 4. Here, on this side, I might make it a decimal because I am going to have to combine it with the 12. Um, so let's see, 25 divided by 4 is 6.25. Um, this is going to factor. You may have noticed this pattern, but what goes in here is always just your b divided by 2. You might have noticed that... Um, in previous ones. Just 8 divided by 2 went there. All right, and then combine over here, negative 12 plus 6.25 is negative 5.75. Square root both sides to solve this. This is going to be a little bit ugly, but I'm trying to go quick. Um, we'll just call this 2.5 lied when I said I wasn't going to allow decimals. Guess I'll allow it. Um, this is going to be, um, let's see, what's the square root? 5.75. Um, this is going to be 2.4-ish i. 
and then subtract 2.5 proper way to do this I forgot the plus or minus put it in front negative 2.5 plus or minus 2.4 I not a very pretty answer if I had more time I would have done fractions and left them as exact answers all right last thing and you don't need to well, you can write it down. It's kind of interesting. Uh, we're going to complete the square with this, and we're going to end up with something kind of interesting. Um, so the first thing you need to do is divide everything by A, because remember what I said when you have a leading coefficient, you need to get rid of it, divide everything by it. So we'll end up with x squared equals B, sorry, plus BX over A plus C over A equals zero. We need to divide everything by A. Now we always move the C value to the other side, get it out of the way. X squared plus BX over A plus blank equals negative C over A plus blank. To find the number that completes the square, we take the B value, which in this case is B over A. We divide it by two and then we square it. So this is going to end up being, if I distribute the 2 to all of this, it becomes b squared over 2 squared is 4 and a squared. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other. So b squared over 4a squared. All right, then we'll factor this. This always factors. To just this over 2. So I'm just going to rewrite this as b over 2a. Negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. Um, so this hopefully looks a little bit familiar to you. Um, and now we're going to finish um, solving for x on this. To do that, we square root both sides. Put a plus or minus in front whenever you square root. We'll be left with x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus this big square root negative c plus or sorry plus c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. All right, um, this is kind of nasty so far to simplify this a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to combine what's under the radical here, um, this negative c over a plus b squared over 4a. But to do that, we need common denominators. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this guy by 4a, because then I'll have common denominators, a times a is a squared. So I can combine those and we'll have, let's see, 4ac plus b squared over 4a squared. Um, I can split this into two separate radicals. This will be 4ac plus b squared on top. And the radical on bottom is going to be 4a squared. And then um, I still have x plus b over 2a on the other side. I'm going to add that to the other side. b over 2a plus or minus square root of, I'm going to move the b squared in front, all over um, this is a perfect square. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of a squared is a. Now because I have common denominators, I can combine those. This will be x equals b plus or minus square root all over 2a. Whew. Okay, so that was a lot of work. Didn't have to write down everything because hopefully Hopefully you didn't write down everything. It took a long time. Um, but what we did just now was we derived the quadratic formula. This here is the quadratic formula. It's what you use anytime you solve. Uh, you need to solve a quadratic formula. 
quadratic equation and none of the other methods work. Factoring, solve by square rooting, or um, completing the square. If none of those work, you use quadratic formula. Um, or if you just don't like solve by uh, completing the square, use quadratic formula. Um, and this is what we're going to be doing in tomorrow's lesson. And I will stop rambling. All right, have a good one, guys.